Hello people. Before I start getting into the build of the drum, I thought I'd give you a little close-up of some of the items that uh, I bought. Uh, these are the main items. I think it's about 98% of, of what I'm going to need here. Some of the other things you can't see, like self-drilling screws, have the odd hook to go on the side of the drum to hang a tea towel or whatever, or your tools. But these are the main bits that I've chosen for my version of the Ugly Drum Smoker. Now, these are tank fittings, uh, as in water, not the weapon. So the wall of the drum will go in there, tighten it up. That's a compression fitting. These are all 28 mil. So that's a 28 mil um, elbow, and that's a 28 mil end feed. So effectively what you've got is that. So you want to be looking for some that the end will go into the compression side so if you can imagine there's the drum there pipe going up and something to support the pipe these uh, munson rings as they're called so they come in three bits one two three 28 mil again it'll sit there like that support your pipe you need two on each length of pipe so there's two lengths of pipe these ball valves, now I get so many that look the same as that. Actually, some of these can be 40 quid each or more, and they all look very similar. Uh, these are about seven quid, so you don't need to be spending that kind of money um, to shop around. Full bore, some of these are restricted for different plumbing reasons. Uh, this is absolutely full bore, simple action. So this is for the air inlet. So I can micro adjust that to any amount very quickly, plus they look good. I mean, seven quid for that, I mean, that's that's got a coating, I think it's brass underneath, that's, that's a bargain. Um, this, probably just a bit of bling, really. Um, this one's in Celsius or centigrade. Look at the size of it, I haven't seen one quite that big before. But the um, it's got a nut on the back, where you can just put it through the wall of the drum, probably 12 inches down from on the side a lot of people have them on the top but i think that's probably going to give you a reading that might be exaggerated anyway this is more for show than than purpose because i've got one of these tasty things so this is a wireless transmitter and that's the bit you take in the house or hang on your belt or whatever and it comes with two probes very really nice quality thing too Nice long cables on it. So one of these will go through a grommet in the side of the drum, a silicon grommet. And that will give me my cavity temperature. And you could probably have half a dozen points around the drum. You could just stick it in to see, you know, just for an experiment's sake, to see where, you, where you're making the most heat. And the other one of these probes will go actually in the meat, i.e. the turkey. So it's fantastic that you could be in your house and just know exactly what's going on, on the drum because the you know when you're smoking a large turkey it takes quite a few hours and uh, to have that is just fantastic very pleased with that um these are a couple of handles i got from being here i think they were a quid in the cheap bin and that'll go on the lid metal of course these things were left over from another project i was at one stage and um it's m12 bolts nuts and these washers, these square washers, I actually reamed them out so they fitted on the thread absolutely tight as you like. So it's not slopping about. Because by the when you compress that down, these are the legs for the drum, by the way, there's three of them, so it'll make a tripod. Um, a tripod's better than four legs uh, on an uneven ground, of course. What I like about these is they do that. So if, however you put on the ground, it will take up the uh, difference which is great. So there's nothing special about this, it's just M12 thread all the way up to the top, two nuts, washer reamed out, and that's 15 mil copper pipe. So I, th I did that just for, just for looks. So there's three of them. These things, um, they were out of the cheap bin as well, and these are curtain rod ends. And I looked at them and I thought, well, they're, they're metal of some description, and I thought, well, oh, what if I um, reamed them out a bit and shoved the pipe up there i thought that might look a bit funky just i don't know if i'll use them or not yet that and this ah, 
This is fun. Uh, you might guess what that is. <coughs> it's like you get on the top of a tractor or a digger or something. It's the rain flap for the exhaust. And I've tightened that up. So that means I can actually set it at any position. It just won't fall down. So for the exhaust, and you want to adjust it, your flow, you can just have it at any, it won't fall down. I think it looks really drum smoky as well. Three inch. So that's 76 mil pipe. This thing, I got off eBay, I think it was 12 quid, which is a bargain, because I mean, could you make that for 12 quid? Look at the thickness of that flange. So this is all gonna get painted. It won't end up remain steel like that. So this is gonna sit in the middle of the lid. I'm gonna be my smoke outlet. Puff and Billy. Uh, these dome headed nuts are gonna go like that. That'll look, that'll look tidy, I think. It's all completely over the tops, but I think these things should be, because it's, it's supposed to be fun. And um, I was thinking, this pipe, if I put it on the buff, I could make that shine. And if I put a clear high temperature lacquer on there, it could be, could be quite blingy. I uh, quite like the difference between the coatings as well. This has got some sort of nickel plating, I think, over brass, as I said. Um, these could all be buffed up. I probably won't, I probably won't get around to it, but it's a nice thought. But the drum is definitely gonna get sprayed. Now, the high temperature paint that uh, I've been looking at, the glossy stuff, it's, it needs curing. And for an even cure, I don't know how you do that on a 44 gallon drum, it's a big space. And if you've got it full of charcoal at the base, you can have an uneven cure around the whole drum. And I think if I'm correctly, if that paint doesn't cure properly, it doesn't fully harden, so it'll be vulnerable. So what I did get was a, um, just a stove mat black. It's not pretty, but I think it's gonna be the, it's not dissimilar to that, I think, actually, just matte and stove-like. That's probably the same stuff. Um, so in contrast to all that, these nice coppery brass bits, and that a bit of nonsense, will just make it look interesting. And the dial will make it look a bit steampunk as well. And that's about it for that lot. So I'm just gonna take the um, camera off this stand and I'll show you uh, the drum. Okay, now that's the grill plate. That, that's 58 centimeters. And that's probably the dearest part in relationship to what you get, maybe not. It was 38 quid and I thought, well, that's quite a lot. But in actual fact, it's six mil and it's really rather well made. So when it arrived, I thought, yeah, that's okay, actually. So that's gonna sit inside the drum on bolts and it'll have two different um, seating positions, one not too far off the coals and one further up so you can put hooks on those bars and hang meats and stuff from the top. Now that thing there, I had this lying around, believe it or not. I, I bought a, um, like an army style tripoded wok stand super burner thing and it came with a free wok and that's it. It's not stainless or anything, but it's spun steel. It's huge and it fits inside the drum, allowing a nice gap right around the edge. And I thought that would make an awesome heat deflector. And not only that, some people, I haven't tried it, put water in their smokers. And I thought, well, this both serves as a heat deflector and a water vessel. So if you haven't got one of these, you could use any. I reckon you could probably use um, a pizza tray, a big circular pizza tray. You can get them as a heat deflector. I think it's quite important because, well, I'll show you. If, um, okay, I'll get ahead of myself. Now, this thing is a mini incinerator. And I was looking for a charcoal bucket, something to put it in, I was gonna make one, and I saw this and I thought, well, that's quite well made. And then I looked at the top and thought, I wonder if I could do something with that. Anyway, it's, this is rather well made too. It's like stuff that you would have made at school once, it, bending your sheet metal and things, it's, it's nice. And then it dawned on me, if I'm gonna be putting charcoal and wood chips in here to produce the smoke for the big drum, if, 
you were to t put some fire rope on the inside there, all the way around, and put some clamps, you know, locking clamps, four of them perhaps, you've got yourself effectively a smoke generator that could generate smoke to turn the big drum into a cold smoker. So if I put a, an inlet on the side, put a decent sized tube to the top of that, I've got a multifunctioning thing. So anyway, I didn't, I didn't buy it for that. It was just thought, well, that's a good idea. I could do that. So this is the bucket. Now, if you look inside, all those holes, I did them. There was only a few piddly little holes in it. I thought, well, it was an incinerator. Maybe they're all about the flame and not, not the slow burn. But I just still think the design was a bit poor. So I maxed out the holes. So that's that. This thing, I've got two or three, three actually, Kallak barbecue, gas barbecues. And this is a, um, a burning pan ring which I had just hanging about, and it's got silicon feet. And coincidentally, the diameter of this bucket fits perfectly in the notches. So the point of that is that, if you look, will sit the bucket off the base of the drum just right. It's about three, four, three and a half, four inches maybe, which is a good height to allow the air underneath. But you'll see more of that when I uh, start building it. I'm just gonna put that away. So that's the drum. Interesting, isn't it? That's the lid. It's inside, whoopee. So now the thing about this drum, you might have noticed it's not painted. Don't buy a painted drum. What a nightmare getting that paint off. You've got to burn it off or sandblast it and it's just disgusting. So if you buy uh, one of these unpainted drums. They're slightly dearer, but it's just got like a protective film on it. It's, it's, I don't even know what it is. It doesn't feel oil or anything, but it'll come off with acetone and ready for spraying. So there's no messy business with that, which is great. It's probably the same sort of stuff that the wok's covered in. Anyway, you, you need to cure your drum. Once you've done all the build work and painted and everything, you need to build an, a mighty set of charcoals in there going and it'll just burn out and, and prime your drum ready for smoking for real so i've decided i'm not going to do time lapse or anything like that because it's boring um i think in this instance uh, i'll do a few stages showing you what i've drilled and where and why perhaps but uh that's what i'm going to do for now so the next thing you'll see will will be some action okay turn it over and that's my first hole for one foot. So around here, this edge this is what I'm talking about. That is nasty. Now it's been on the factory floor and it's got a, it's a curl over lip from uh, manufacture. And you gotta get yourself one of these and round it over. And once you've done that, I reckon running around with some em emery as well, just to make sure that that's friendly. Uh, obviously a, a super sharp edge uh, paint's not gonna stick to it anyway. So I think that's important for handling the drum, not to, not to, it would be, you know, one of those awful cuts like cut with a hacksaw blade, takes weeks to heal. Yeah, exactly. So that's first job. Um, right, I'll be back when I've drilled the holes. There we go. That's foot number one in. Number two over there. Number three. So that's kind of what you get. I've yet to turn it over to see what it actually looks like, but I think it'll be fine. So that's that. These are the nuts. So I'm gonna, um, I think I might wash them on the inside so I can really crank it down. It's probably not necessary. The, the steel's reasonably thick. And um, that'll be it. There's the desired effect. Not sure if the camera's distorting that, but the legs are actually straight up and down well since the last update i've been drilling and polishing as you can probably see i did end up using the curtain rod end fitting 
interestingly, it's uh, it's soldered straight onto the copper pipe with lead-free solder, the typical same stuff you use for household plumbing. Um, it's soldered perfectly. There's the Munson fitting. Polished copper pipe, ball valve, elbow. And that tank fitting, um, incidentally, uh, I turned it around the other way. I didn't need to use the compression side of it at all, which made it so much easier, I just soldered it in. So there's a, another tip. So there's that one. And if I go around the drum, there's one on each side. Looks a bit robot-like. It's not intentional, but I like all the... Uh, it looks like it's got limbs now, little feet. So the next thing to do is uh, I'm going to take those feet back off and give them a buff. You can see that it gives a nice little tripod arrangement. And also, I've been busy with the lid. Those handles aren't secured yet, I'm just putting there for placement. But the stack, it's, it is bolted on now. So that's um, it on there for good. Well. What I was thinking of doing is unbolting that and sitting it on with some silicone because that actually, when the metal flexes, I don't know if you can see that, leaves a little bit of a thing there, a gap. So if I set that on with some silicone, that will be the end of that. And it can sit there while I spray it, it won't cause no problem. It'll seal it perfectly with the smoke. I don't want any leaks actually, just for neatness sake. So that's that for now. Once I've got the handles on um, and I'll do go back to the drum, drill the holes in various places for the racks and the walk, etc. I'll get back to you. There it is. That's it finished for now until I do the paintwork. I've done the insides, mounted the rack bolts and that's about it so what i might do i might just mount this camera on a tripod and open the lid so you can see what's going on or i might just come over and do it this way no okay this is the finished job for now until i do the paintwork so all this has got to come off perhaps these certainly got to come off uh, before painting. Take the lid off. This is what's inside now. These top bolts are for the second position of this. So put that out. And that will sit on there like that. And that will be useful for hooks and hanging meat down that way. I think that's going to be okay. I'll show you the rest. So it looks like an Iron Maiden in here. So some sort of torture device. So uh, this will come out like that. Probably with a bit, a bit of practice, it might be a bit less noisy. And that's the fire bucket in the bottom. That's it really, it's a very simple thing. So, as it stands at the moment, I'm not sure how well this is gonna work as a heat deflector or evaporate or moisture control thing. It doesn't matter, we'll see. But what it does do is sit very nicely. If you get no reasoning behind this, here will be very, very hot directly above the coal bucket. So when this metal heats up, it will work like a, some kind of hot plate or um, like a fire back, really. It will reflect the heat back up. Uh, because it's a parabole, it's also going to be heating on the outside with the ambient heat going on down there. So it should focus in a nice area, an even form of heat further away where it's hotter, closer to the turkey, it'll be less hot than here 
So I'm just I'm figuring this little section here where the turkey or whatever is going to be sat could be quite well regulated. That's the theory anyway. So once I've painted this, I've got to fire it up, clean all the um, all the film off. I'm going to try it on a turkey first, uh, a chicken first, I think. Less risk. Yeah, the 50 quid turkey is <laughs> too much of a risk um, just to mess it up, I think. Anyway, that's it for now. Well, here it is in, in its glory. I've just got to cure it now. So I've just got it set outside where the um, cat eye usually sits. The shiny parts are where the paint's just a little bit thick and when it heats up, it should all dry to an even mat. With a bit of luck. Yeah, see if it works. The curing process was a success, so I think we'll just go straight to the brining of the turkey now. So the next clip will be that. So this is the turkey after 20 minutes preparation. 5.3 kilo turkey in eight liters of brining solution with one and a half cups of salt, half a bottle of Coke, bottle of ginger beer, clementines, juniper berries, allspice, garlic. What else was there in it? Bay leaves. Christmas morning. Turkey time. Just going to get these coals going and put it on the top of the rest of them. And they get the drum to temperature. This is a Weber fire starter. I think it was 15 quid off Amazon. Should last for years. It's well made. Good way to get your coal started. An hour and 20 in, and it's looking really good. It's staying within a degree now. Stay with as you like. Ready for this? You tell me. <laughs> it's pretty stressful actually. I haven't looked at this not one bit. Whoa. Oh my goodness. Hello, Mr. Turkey. Oh my god. <laughs> Can I even pick that up? When no. Right. Jeez. Incredible. Didn't expect that. Wow. Ouch. Oh, the juice coming the juice coming out of the probe hole is amazing. Jeez, that's so exciting. Look at it. Look at all the juice for the gravy. Mind. Ooh. All right. Look. Look at the juice. <laughs> Whoa. 
Whoa. That's cool. Are It's like a lady that I um, <laughs> met it in a hospital. Oh. <laughs> In West Australia, and she uh, had Let skin it. like that. <laughs> Don't make Somebody needs to hold the dish. Yeah, it's hot. Is it? No. Oh, Tin foil no. goes cold oh, really wow. quick. Wow. That's you. Oh. oh goodness, real Look at around. that. Right. Oh, I say. That's beautiful. No, go on, you next. Oh, blimey. Oh, gosh. 